Despite the lockdowns and travel restrictions of the COVID-19 pandemic, Tamasic delivered a record year as global markets rebounded. For the financial year ended March 31st, its net portfolio value hit a new high of 381 billion Singapore dollars, up 75 billion over the past 12 months for a one-year total shareholder return of 24.53%. Tomasic invested $49 billion and divested $39 billion, record numbers on both counts. Joining me now is The Straits Times' associate editor, Vikram Khanna. Welcome back to the show, Vikram. So, a one-year return for shareholders came in at nearly 25%, a turnaround from last year's minus 2.28%. How did Tomasic pull off, shall we say, a record year? Well, um, the main story is what happened in the markets. The, as you might remember, in March 2020, in the third week of March 2020, the stock markets crashed because of COVID-19. But from the end of March 2020 to the end of March 2021, which is the period covered in the, in the Timasic results, the markets did fantastically well. The uh, S&P 500 in the United States went up about 60%. The NASDAQ composite, which is the tech heavy index, that went up about 85%. The Stray Times Industry, STI, our own market, went up about 30%. And the Shanghai composite went up about 25%. So now all of that lifted the returns on Temasek's listed portfolio, listed companies. But what it also did is that when, when markets go up, what happens is that a lot of unlisted companies get listed. And when that happens in a bull market, there are usually huge increases in valuations. And that seems to have happened to Temasek as well. I mean, they note, they note in their review that a lot of their unlisted holdings became listed uh, during this period. So that is basically the story. Uh, of course, I mean, it's not just the markets. They obviously made some good investments as well. And they have, they have outperformed, uh, I think, some other sovereign wealth funds. For example, Norway's sovereign wealth fund turned in about 10.9% for 2020. It's not strictly comparable because that's 2020 calendar year. And we're looking at uh, March to March. But it still gives you an idea. So they've obviously made some good investments as well. Right. Well, let's look ahead to Tomasic's future. What trends are you seeing uh, that are emerging in its portfolio? Well, broadly speaking, I mean, they're, they're looking, they're building a quite different portfolio now compared to what it was, say, 10 years ago. So they've emphasized four themes. Uh, they call them uh, structural trends. They are digitization, sustainable living, the future of consumption and longer lifespans. Now, many of these areas are all the rage among investors, but the, these things involve investments in relatively new companies, not in household names. So if you take, for example, financial services, in the past, they would invest in companies like Standard Chartered Bank or Merrill Lynch or the big Chinese banks. But now they're investing in companies that many of us have never heard of. Uh, companies like FNZ is a British uh, wealth services provider. Companies like NIUM, N-I-U-M, which is a Singapore global digital payments provider and card issuer. And they're doing this not only in financial services, but in many other areas like, uh, you know, e-commerce, uh, biotech, blockchain, and so on. So the future will be pretty interesting to watch. Well, we'll, cer we'll certainly uh, keep an eye out on Tomasic, uh, that's for sure. Vikram, thank you so much for coming on the show. That was Vikram Khanna, Associate Editor at okay. The Straits Times.